party people in the place to be, vandals, and everybody else out there lurking in the darkness. This is a brand new episode of How Did We Get Here? And uh, tonight we are, I'm talking with a veritable renaissance man. I mean, this guy does it all. I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. Um, say hello, David. Hey, everybody. I'm David. Uh, I am new to the comics world, and I'm really excited to be on the show. Let's talk about comics and whatever else is happening in yeah. their lives. <laughs> yeah. New to the comic world, but you're very productive. Like, uh, I think the first thing I saw from you was maybe the Eureka 1, issue 1. Yeah. yeah. And then since then, I've seen you drop. Well, you already had worked on Narita, and now, like you were saying before, you're giving it a 2.0 version, like revamping it, adding some color, making some changes. So I, I, I'm assuming that was the book you worked on before Eureka? Yeah, yeah. So that, that was like kind of my pet project from 10 years ago or something. Wow. And I just okay. started drawing. I was like, I want to draw a comic book, you know. And it's weird. I look back at pictures of when I first started drawing. I was drawing on paper and everything with ink and brushes and all that. And pictures of me drawing and I'm sitting next to my kid. And my kid is like small in the pictures. Now she's full grown, which is kind of scary in, on several levels, but it just meant that I, I took it as like, oh, I was just dragging my feet. I never finished that that project, or, you know. So I finally decided to knuckle down. Like 2020, I said, okay, I'm gonna start drawing my ass off. I hadn't picked up a pencil in five years, and I was like really craving it. So I uh, put down the 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 air hammer, the nail gun, and started picking up the pencil more often. As a person that's only read the uh, new colored version of the issue one in uh, Narita, I was wondering how, how different is the OG one? Uh, so I've, I've even thought about like putting out the very, very, very first thing that I drew, first comic that I did of her. Uh, it's just pen and ink. There's no gray tones. There's no half tones. There's none of that stuff at all. Um, it's much more cartoony. Um, it's a little more trashy. Uh, and it's only like eight pages long. It's so uh, as like an issue zero. I want to put that in the compendium, like in the, in the very back. You know what I mean? So people can be yeah, like, "Oh, yeah. this is what the character started out as." You know, um, but it's it's kind of the same same themes and storylines. I feel like I kind of cut my teeth on that and figured out how to write a comic book and what worked and what didn't. You draw all this shit and then you look at you look at all you know twenty eight or thirty pages or whatever that you did and you're reading through it and you're like that sort of didn't flow very well, you know? And it's kind of sad when you put in countless hours of drawing your ass off and working really hard on something, and then you read it, and you're like, it wasn't that good. Oh. So uh, <laughs> that, that taught me, like, okay, dude, you've got to, like, script it first like a real person does, not some schmuck in a room, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, le learning on the job, right? I mean, like you said, uh, that was your first comic, so obviously there's going to be some growing pains, but uh, I'd be really interested to see that. I love, like, I like the process stuff, so that that would be a nice little, like, add-on in the back, like you said, of, uh, like, when you do, like, the uh, complete edition and that, throw that in there as a bonus. Like, I really dig yeah. that kind of stuff. The yeah. library edition, like, bound in leather, you know, embossed cover, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, people appreciate the the little extras you throw in, uh, people throw into those editions, so, yeah. yeah. Then, uh, after that, you, that's that's this next Kickstarter back from you was the Narita, the, the revamp, the new and improved version. Then after that, you did Eureka issue two, two. on Kickstarter. Yeah. 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 So I backed that one because uh, I really, I dug your style. I love the way you draw. I love the style you draw in and everything. It's really Thanks. cool, and I I love black and black and white books. So, Whoops, that's yeah. And, book. yeah, and uh, <laughs> so, so I was really Most digging. It. Yeah, <laughs> and then now to the present. Now to you have present. a new kicks. Yeah, you have a new Kickstarter out right now called Dusk Witch that you wrote with uh, um, Morgan Quaid, if I'm not Morgan. mistaken. Yes. Yeah, yeah he's, he wrote he's, it. Did you? Did you? Yeah, he wrote it. He wrote it. Okay. No, he, he well, I mean, I wouldn't say that I, I didn't have any say in the process, but he, he wrote the script and everything. He came up with the character, and I was like, he said, do you have any suggestions? And I said, she should be black. And he was like, oh, oh okay, sure. 
because when I read the script, I just read her as that right away. And I was like, and it's okay. set in New Orleans, right? And he was like, yeah, uh, yeah. N- not necessarily, but that could be cool. He lives yeah, yeah. in Australia, so yeah, he's, he's in the he's never... right now. Yeah, he's in the oh, hey, what's that? It's right now, man. What's going <laughs> on, mate? Throwing another <laughs> shrimp on the barbie. What time is it? Like two in the afternoon? I, I could throw uh, them there. Wants to hop hours. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I think it's so anyway. Nine in the morning. He, he, yeah, he like he, he threw the ball in my court to like design the character and kind of just said, "Hey, you know, have fun with it or whatever." And I, I, I'm pretty bad with character design. I mean, I can draw faces and facial features and hairstyles and things like that is fine but when it comes to an outfit it's like a t-shirt they're wearing a t-shirt yeah, yeah. most of my characters are actually naked if you haven't noticed the yeah, other, yeah, my other yeah. two characters yeah. don't even have a fucking outfit because yeah. i'm that bad at designing outfits so. <laughs> but i think she looks badass man i like the design it's really good i love the scar and the eye was that you uh, that was that was morgan he was like she's okay. got to have like an uh, an eye patch or some sort of scar or whatever and that that cover, that variant cover that you're looking at, that's kind of like the background here too. Yeah. When she goes into the dusk realm, yeah, there you go. When she goes yeah. into the dusk realm, this like skull appears on her face. That's all Morgan's doing. Um, when she's in our realm, when she's in New Orleans walking around or whatever, she's got this pretty cool looking scar, and one of her eyes looks yeah. like Method Man from Wu Tang Clan. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I really, I, when I saw the first. Uh, you posted a while just before the Kickstarter launched and stuff. I was like, what the, what, what's this? And yeah. then like, I dug the color palette and everything. It, it was really cool. Really cool. Yeah. It, it's oh. a really fun comic. I, I like the cop character. I, I what's his name? Yeah. I, I, I didn't find it in the comic, but like, he's probably my favorite character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have the script over here somewhere. Uh, I, I don't even know his name because he they never used it. You know what I mean? He's like a, yeah. He's very important in the in the books to come, and there's going to be, I think, three comics thus far um, okay. that where he's he's kind of scripted a rough kind of story arc for three comics. Maybe it'll go on more than that. I hope so. But um, yeah, that character he said was based on a friend of his. Who's he's like this guy's just got to be bald. He's got to have a big beard. And so I made him bald with a big beard. Yeah. But maybe maybe the person that he was thinking of was a little more like macho and kind of like stacked. But this dude is just like kind of a normal shaped guy. He's kind of skinny, you know what I mean? Like lanky yeah. and with a ZZ top beard instead of like a bushwhacking, you know, lumberjack. Yeah. So well, that, yeah. that that that's what kind of was cool about him though, because like he does he looks a little unassuming, but like he steps up, he comes in with his uh baton and like goes after the monster and all that. I was just like, dude, this guy this guy's wilding. <laughs> When I, man, when I read that part of the script, I cracked up so hard. I'm like, what does he think he's going to do? Like, he clicks open the ass. Like, oh, I'm going to kick this guy's ass. Like, well, I guess you got to try to do something. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's <laughs> no, man. That, that monster has junk and boobs. Like, don't, don't mess with that guy at all. Run away. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, we'll, let's give the people that are going to be watching this on the replay, or maybe that'll hop in live. We have Adrian that's in the chats too. Adrian Caloric. He's, uh, he's actually going to be coming out with a book with, for lesser known called the sitter. So, uh, he's going to be part of the family. Uh, cause, yeah. uh, every one of your books that you've put through Kickstarter, you've ran with lesser known comics. If I'm not. Mistaken. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. how did that, how did that come about? How did that relationship, uh, uh, I kind of I, I, I stumbled into it. Um, I was just kind of drawing a lot, and I started sending messages to people haphazardly. And I'm really terrible at business, and I have no business sense whatsoever. So my tactic was like shoot direct messages to people on Instagram. That's super professional. Hey, Top Cow <laughs> Comics. Hey, Image Comics. Hey, lesser known comics. I guess they're not known. So here you go. You know, I'm like I send out a bunch of. <laughs> DMs to like fucking boom studios. What? No, that's not how you do that. That's not how that works. Uh, so <laughs> Mark s- stupidly got yeah. back to me, uh, and it, he's 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 just a, enough of a knucklehead to say yes to me, and I, that's how that happened. He was like, "I think nice. this could be cool." I, nice. Yeah, you're pretty cool, and I'm like, "You don't know, dude. I'm a real pain in the ass." And I yeah. draw a lot, and he's like, "That's fine," you know. So, yeah, that's how did, that happened. Did you pitch him on Eureka? Is that like um, how you landed? Or, uh, 
Well, so yeah, so uh, Yuriko was like my uh, test subject on Kickstarter because I never launched Kickstarter. I was super nervous about it. I didn't know how anything about indie comic stuff at all. So I was like, I don't want to throw Narita under the bus because what if it flops real hard? And that's kind of like my name brand, you know, or whatever. So I was like, I'll throw this vampire under the bus. Nobody's going to say no to that. I mean, it's a hot vampire. It's got sex, action, blood, Asian people. Like, you can't go wrong. It's going to do okay, I think, maybe. So, yeah, I pitched I pitched him that, but I already had the Kickstarter running. And so he just got to basically hop on the train and, like, kind of bandit ride what I was already doing, which was a win-win for both of us. Um, and, yeah, then from there I was like, hey, I got another comic book. And then when me and Morgan got together and did Dusk Witch, um, I was like, hey, we got another comic book. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not. It's so unprofessional. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so uh let's give the folks your elevator pitch for dusk Witch, and then we'll roll the uh the promo video to give them a little taste okay elevator pitch all right uh hello mr image comics who wants to buy my comic i was trapped in this <laughs> elevator uh <clears throat> dusk Witch is awesome man it's about this young like quasi voodoo priestess living in current day new orleans and she's kind of charged with keeping the monsters from another realm called the Dusk Realm at bay. And they're trying to break through into our realm. We as the reader don't really know why, but there's a certain reason why things are starting to fall apart. And that veil between realms is getting very thin. So this is book one. And we start to see the how thin that veil is. And we start to see strengths and weaknesses from our character. And it promises to be a good ride, a fun ride. Nice, nice. All right, so this is issue one of Dusk Wish, which is running on Kickstarter right now. All right, let's roll that promo clip, clip, Johnny. I got the link in the description. If you watch this and you want to just run and back it right away, just go in that description, and I'll probably post it in the chat right now, too. Here you guys go. Night. You played the music for that too, right? That was I did. I did not. No, actually, right, no. Morgan did that. He he's an excellent musician. I did the music for my other promo stuff for like Yuriko Book One Kickstarter and for the Narita Kickstarter. I I made all that music, but oh. yeah, Morgan's a badass. He, it's great teaming up with people who are creative because then they can do shit too. They can pull their weight. You know, you team up with like an inker. What are you gonna do? You're gonna ink my awesome pencils? Hell no, fool. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm yeah, just joking. So, I like inkers. They're cool. They <laughs> add line weight and shadow. and ooh, Yeah. So for the people listening who aren't familiar with David, uh, David's quite an accomplished musician as well. That's why Johnny asked if he wrote the music for that promo. Uh, you're actually part of uh, how many bands now? Three, four? Uh... Three, three or four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I, I lose track. I have to like stop sometimes and be like, no, you're not going to play bass for that band. You're not gonna play drums for that band. You gotta calm down and focus on whatever you're trying to focus on, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the bands you're in is uh, uh, tw Born Twins. Yeah. Uh, that's the one. Uh, that's the band you have with, uh, I believe, with your wife. Yes. Uh, what do you play in that one? Because you you're multi talented when it comes to instruments as well. Because some bands you play drums, some you play guitar. Uh, you know, I, I'm assuming you sing in quite a few of them as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what's your role in the with, in the band with your wife? We kind of got into it before we came on air there, but <laughs> what's my role? Well, let's see. I I, I move all the equipment. Um, I drive the car, <laughs> fill up the gas tank, uh, make sure I don't forget my own equipment. Uh, I play I play drums in that band. I also sing. Uh, I write the lyrics, which then get redacted most of the time, uh, and then I. <laughs> 
And I also, uh, I play the bass at the same time, which is kind of weird. Okay. We had a, um, yeah. we had a, ba we had a bass player for a long time. He quit for a really, really good reason, but it was like last minute. We already had a, a, a date booked to go and record. We had like a whole set list ready to go. And we were like, damn, what do we do? I don't want to play to a backing track. That's lame. I don't want to play to a loop sample. That's weird. You know? So I had this bright idea to go on Craigslist and buy an electric organ mm. and just chop it in half keep the bass pedal section and use that and play that with my foot while I was playing drums because wow. I'm terrible with my hi-hat. And so I figured, well, nah, I'm not really using that foot. It's just kind of sitting there. I'll just use it to play bass. And that's cool. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but I think I got it. I think I got it down now. It's kind of like one of those, you know, like rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time, you know? <laughs> and you guys yeah, got a somewhat new album out, uh, Novellas Cotas. Yeah, that one uh, that one came out last, I think March. Yeah, we just toured with with that one actually uh, this summer. We went and did a Southwest tour. We went to like uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and West Texas. We just did like ten dates real quick. It was cool though. I've been listening to it like all week, man. Give me back my awesome. man. It's like my jam, dude. Like I really, I really dig that track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a B fifty twos cover. It is. That, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, whenever we play that song, I always, after we're done, if people like it or whatever, I'm like, yeah, we wrote that one. I think it's going to be a hit. <laughs> and then somebody gets pissed and they're like, fuck you. You didn't write that. You know, <laughs> so throwing beers at me and stuff, which is great. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that. Uh, who did? There's another band that did a version of it. That's, that's a, I love that. I think I like your version more than the original. And there's another band called Chicks on Speed. Yep. And they do a cover of it too, which is fantastic. And man, yeah. I, I just love the, the takes on it. I, I think I like the, the two co those two covers, yours and the Speed on Chick, uh, Chicks on Speed. I love that cover. I think I love it more than the original, actually. So, yeah. yeah I mean, it, anytime we cover a song, like we've covered a couple of Cure songs in the past too. And, you know, I don't have an orchestra or a synthetic orchestra with much keyboards and stuff um, to play all the weird parts that Robert Smith comes up with. So I just kind of, we just kind of played it however we could and it ends up sounding like us and then diehard Cure fans are like, whoa, that's what? That's from the B side. That's from Join the Dots box set. Disc four, you know, but everyone else just thinks it's our band because it, it kind of has yeah, to yeah. sound like that. Yeah. We yeah. actually recent, we recently uh, added a keyboard player to the band. She's pretty young. She's my daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's, she's she just turned 15 so when we were on tour it was kind of a point of contention at some of the clubs we were like you can't go past the soda machine or they'll grab you and they'll throw you outside and we're in downtown albuquerque and there are crackheads everywhere so don't don't do it she's like what about the pee i'm like just pee in your pants don't do it yeah yeah, yeah. So, so man like you're a very creative person like comics uh music how much do those two things like influence one another like your comic making your music making do they kind of does it blur lines at times or how much does one influence the other uh i think it i think it it, it influences quite a bit i mean i have a bunch of the songs on that record that are uh kind of like stories and thematically they'll have like imagery in them you know like uh there's one called marketplace and it's about mermaids it's like uh, uh so many people get lost the beautiful sirens no longer afloat they're dead they don't know like it gets real kind of you know i don't know vampiric or whatever with the lyrics and i i really enjoy that whenever i can throw some sort of vampire like easter egg into a song yeah, yeah. um so and also you know i i i kind of try and create a vibe when I'm drawing comic books that would maybe work well with the kind of music that I make. Because when you're making music, you're trying to create a vibe with your sound. You know what I mean? So whether you're just a singer songwriter with an acoustic guitar or you're a dude with a, a Casio tone for the painfully alone, you know, whatever you're doing, you're creating a vibe, right? So it's the same thing when you're, when you're making comic books, except you get to do it with, with pictures. So, yeah. for example, that, that clip that you played that Morgan came up with the music for, 
that's a perfect example of when those things come together because that's not the music that I would have made for that reel. Yeah. But it works perfectly. So perfect. for him, what his interpretation was of it is just fucking magic. It was like, that's awesome. It's out of left field for me, but it's perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 So let's say Dusk Witch. I, I'm, I'm assuming when you're drawing, you're const you like you have music on in the background and stuff. Uh, what was the soundtrack to you making Dusk Witch? Like, what what was the what were the type of jams you were listening to while you're you're uh, making this book? Oh man, it, I actually made a playlist, a Dusk Witch playlist. That I'll share it with you guys. It's pretty good. Oh yeah, serious? Mm -hmm. uh, where do you have it? Yeah. Do you have it anywhere like on Spotify or something? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's All on right. Spotify. Uh, nice. It's. Uh, uh, you could give it to us, and Johnny could drop it in the description afterwards if you yeah. want. You could send us the link. Yeah. We'll drop yeah. it in the description. So anyone listening who wants to go check out the soundtrack that David worked to while making Dusk Witch, man, we're, we'll we'll drop it in the descriptions after, so you guys can go get a, it, you know, yeah. maybe yeah, get a vibe it, for it, and then like if you like that 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 playlist, maybe you'll and it'll entice you to go back the book, which you should because beautiful book, fun story. I mean. You'd be a fool not to. Yeah, it's. It, I I shared the playlist with Morgan, and I was like, "Hey, man, I know you're a white dude from Australia, but I'm a Mexican kid who grew up in like the dirty South. So, <laughs> and I've been to New Orleans a bunch of times. You know, like there's gonna be some like pretty gangsta ass rap on there, but there's also <laughs> you know Neville Brothers and uh, 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 you know Nina Simone and. Uh, Jelly Roll Morton and just like some real classic, awesome New Orleans music, um, you know. Yeah, but cool. this is good. It's real good. You'll like it, or maybe you'll hate it. I don't know. But either way, <laughs> yeah. well, that's all right. I'm always looking for playlists while I'm at work, so uh, so I'll definitely yeah. add that to the queue and listen to that playlist at some point this week while I'm working. For sure, <laughs> I always try and make a playlist. It's funny because actually sometimes, uh, like Mark, I don't know if you know Mark from Lesser Known Comics. He, uh, uh, yeah, I've talked to, I've, I've chatted with him briefly. We're supposed to have him come on the show. I, uh, we're supposed to book him up for sometime in October. So, yeah. Oh, that's a terrible idea. You don't want to talk to that guy. He's a oh, real yeah. jerk. You don't, <laughs> you're not going to like him at all. He's <laughs> no. <laughs> not even worth talking to. Ew, Mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he had me illustrate like, um, I guess, uh, five or six pages for, um, uh, like an LKC mini book that he's going to be giving out at cons and stuff. Okay. Uh, about a character named Laosa, and she's like this immortal kind of like enforcer who's half Native American, and she lives in the old Wild West, and she works at a brothel that's run by a magical Chinese woman. Okay, um, totally my cup of tea. But he had me do like five pages for it, and he sent me a little playlist that he was like this is kind of the vibe i'm going for with the yeah. thing so it's super helpful to listen to that music and be like all right i, I see what you're trying to do okay cool yeah okay. you know nice but, yeah. yeah yeah for sure so you could relate to it right that process so mm -hmm. yeah for sure. where, does you, where does your interest in um eastern folklore come into play just wondering after reading um Erico, because you kind of go yeah. deep into um you know, some other cultures and it's pretty interesting like, I was wondering, like, where did that passion come from? It's just really interesting. I uh, So I grew up in Texas. I, I live in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's very hot and very boring here um, for me because I grew up here. Um, and that was a way for me to I actually wrote the novel a year ago. <clears throat> it's, it's about, like, 250 pages. Um, I haven't published it yet. But I wrote the novel first, and I wrote that during lockdown. And I was like, just started writing, and I started writing more and more and more. And then I came up with this character, and and it actually came about because I was drawing stuff, and a friend of mine was like, "Hey, draw me something." And I was like, "Well, what do you want me to draw?" And he was like, "Draw me, draw me like a vampire fucking werewolf." And I was like, "What? Okay, what? All right, sure." And so I did, and then I started thinking like, how would that, how would that ever even happen? Like other than Twilight, how would that happen? You know what I mean? Because the vampire was Asian, obviously, and then the werewolf was not Asian. So I was like, Asian, but not Japanese. Maybe Korean? I don't know. I really, really love Korean horror films, you know, like uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, and, and Old Boy, and all that stuff. It's really awesome. Um, I grew up watching those, those films. I just love that Asian cinema. 
So I wanted to do something and it just kind of turned into this deep dive where I started learning about Korean history. And then I started researching the Mongol horde. And then I started thinking about like in the, in the book, not to give away any spoilers or anything. Most comic book people don't read actual books anyway, except for me. But uh, that was that was an, an unnecessary dig at all the comic book people out there. I'm sure you read lots of novels. And Charlotte Bronte is probably your favorite. Person. But anyway, what I was going to say is, I was like, how did the Mongol horde take over all of, you know, Eurasia? Like, how were they that powerful? It's crazy. And then I started thinking about it, and it dawned on me. Obviously, they had a sect of Tibetan vampire monks on their team. Duh. So anyway, yeah, that's where it goes back in time. So when there's that whole Mongol horde thing that happens at the beginning of Yuriko 2 for, oh, sh spoiler. But anyway, yeah, so she's, she's following a Mongol horde that has uh, taken over occupied Korea, which is th at that time was called Goreyo. It's just this cool-ass rabbit hole, and I just went down it. I love it. It's just really cool. It's so completely different from, like, racist Texas. That is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. To answer your question. Yeah, oh, I just I just thought it was interesting subject matter, and um, I don't think I've seen it approached in um, Western comics at all. You know, um, you know, stuff the turn of the century Korea. You know what I mean? So I was just wondering, like, what interested you to tell a story about that? Because, I, and a noir story on top of that. I guess it's horror too, but like, it's a it's very noir you know, most of all. I would say because it's about the yeah. uh, brother in search of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely like this romanticism kind of thing going on. Uh, I try not to take myself too seriously. There is uh, uh, a, a thread of comedy through the the actual novel, and I need to work that into the book a little more because the book is like super serious. And the way I handled that with both of the Yuriko campaigns is when I was doing the, the Kickstarters, I would do these promotional illustrations that were like three panels and they're jokes, you know? It's just like a, a comic of Yuriko fucking with people, just being a jerk and like yeah. making jokes or whatever. Because she's super austere in the comic book. There's there's not nary a joke is told, you know? So if all the promotional material is her just like fucking with you, it, it lends itself to, I don't know, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, I remember your, when you were promoting it, I, I really liked all your... Your, your approach to it and stuff. It was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna I wanted to actually do like a little collected thing of just those comic books where it's just like vampire comedy and that's it. You know, like the the camp the the high council of, of vampires has spoken and it's like Count Chocula, Bella Lagosi, <laughs> and the Count from Sesame Street. You know what I mean? They're like those are the top vampires, you know, you're never gonna find one that's more than those guys. So uh, I was wondering, like, uh, you're you're pr you're a pretty prolific musician, uh, so, I mean, where do you like? Were you a musician first, or did you always draw as a kid? Like, how how did all these things develop? Like, did you go to like an art school where you learn everything, or you're self taught? Like, how did you uh, come about being so uh, so creative in in so many different aspects and genres of uh, of art? Uh, well, I did go to art school. Uh, I went to art school in Austin at UT in uh, printmaking. So um, uh, I also own a small screen printing shop in Austin, too. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask and, you about that because you posted some videos. That was one of the things I, I was going to ask you later on. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so I, I, owned a, uh, I owned a small art gallery, too, uh, for a little while um, with my wife. And... Uh, you know, so I was really connect, trying to stay connected in the art world. And at the time, I was making high art, not this lowbrow art. But I always just wanted to make comic books. And even in throughout art school, all of my prints and things, everyone just said, you should just draw comic books, dude. That's definitely what you want to do. You know, I was like, oh, well, no, I'm a real artist. Take me seriously. And they were like, yeah, draw some comic books. Um, music, I've been messing around with since you know i was like 12 or something like playing guitar i went to school for a little while to study jazz guitar at the university of north texas okay and dropped out of that because it was a lot of dots and lines and it was very complex and there's a lot of theory and i was like what do you mean i can't bend a note when i'm playing a solo and they're like this is jazz you can't do that uh so i came back to austin and started smushing things on things to make images and here i am 
Nice, nice. Yeah, because uh, you got your hands in a little bit of everything. Uh, uh, from what I was understanding, you said, did you work in construction for a while too? Because yeah. uh, you're just recently you're posting uh, this this sped up uh, video clips of you <laughs> building your uh, your shed in the backyard, and then you you kind of mentioned it a little bit in the beginning when we're when we're talking. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the second iteration of a space for my wife to teach yoga in our backyard. Oh, okay. So I built her. I already built her a yoga thing. What the hell? She needs another one. Come on, man. She's like, yeah, well, do you want to get kicked out of the band? No, she didn't say that. Well, the original <laughs> one that I built was screened in on three sides because it was during COVID and people needed airflow and I all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how we kept afloat and didn't completely capsize during the whole lockdown thing where no one could work. Yeah. Um, and I, I was also working construction. So after we closed the art gallery, I figured, hey, I know how to sheetrock a wall and fix the toilet or whatever. It snowballed real fast and where people were like, hey, can you remodel my entire bathroom? Hey, can you remodel my entire kitchen? Hey, can you rip my roof off? And I'm like, uh, yes, I can. Damn, I can. You know, it was, it was weird. But it's, it's tough, man. Like I, I ended up at some point in time, I was trying to frame just a small little shed and outbuilding for somebody, not like the one that I post, much smaller than that. And my uh, piece of wood exploded when I hit it with the nail gun, and the nail shot right through this finger. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Right through there. Oh wait, sorry, no, no joke, no pun intended here. But it went right, it went right through the knuckle, like okay. all the way through. It was super nasty, and I couldn't hold a pencil for a while. And I thought to myself, like, hmm. This could be bad for my comic book career that I've been wanting to do forever if I keep shooting myself with nail guns. Maybe I should stop nail gunning things and I should start drawing things more often. So that's kind of why I, I, I transitioned out of that. It had been a good like seven years of carpentry, full-time carpentry. Um, so I'm glad I'm not, I'm really glad I'm not doing that right now as much. Uh, Except when my wife tells me to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you can do it yourself, it, it saves on uh, that cost as well, right? The labor. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you were mentioning uh, how when you started, you're working like pen on paper. So does that mean you've transitioned to digitally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally work on an iPad now. Okay. Uh, an yeah, iPad so with a giant crack right across the middle of the screen. <laughs> as soon as I got it, I sat on it, which is pretty uh. cool. <laughs> Smart move. I, everyone, I recommend it. Everyone should try that. Just sit on your iPad and see what happens. It could be so cool. what's uh, what's your uh, program of choice? Is it Procreate or uh, what do you it's, use to make it? Your make your comics. Clip Studio. Clip Studio. Okay. Yeah. It's just so easy to um, you can you know you can pull your boxes for your panels. You can add the word bubbles. You can change all the metrics metrics for the. Uh, Font sizes, importing fonts is really easy. Uh, you can import brushes. You can create your own brushes. It doesn't look as user friendly, and it is maybe not as user friendly as Procreate. But yeah. I, I find that when it comes down to nuts and bolts, it's a vastly superior, vastly superior program for so, comic book making. So once you get a handle of it. It, it'll serve you much better than procreate and once you know how to yeah. work it it's better for you i got you yeah it's very similar to photoshop from circa 1999 oh, which nice. is like my jam yeah me too that's when i was using photoshop like yeah so, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it would be very intuitive to you You'd be like oh yeah you hit the t button and it makes a transform box nice yeah, you know yeah 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 <laughs> b is for brush it's cool yeah <laughs> Uh, another thing I noticed in your art is your the format of your comics. Uh, you don't have the standard North American uh, size floppy for Narita or Eureka, but I believe Dusk Witch is standard is a reg is a standard format. So, uh, well, why did you go with the uh, non traditional North American format for the two other books? Why do you think I did that? This is this is this would be more interesting. Um, if you had to guess, uh, your panel because... layout, the way you draw, because your panel layouts, man, it just comes out looking really nice on the format you chose. 
but I mean, that that could um, be correlated or maybe more than in cause the aid. Or maybe back in the way back in the day, that's the format that most books or manuscripts were done in. Maybe it has to do with a cultural hist historic aspect to it, probably. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> What's the reason? There's no wrong answer here, guys. Stop sweating so hard. Uh, <laughs> the real reason, the real reason, is because these were in, initially intended to be um, just. Xerox copied. That's why Narita was supposed to be in black and white. That's why Yuriko was stark black and white. It's so you're legal put size. on the eleven seven legal and fold. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Not even eleven by seventeen because I'm so ghetto that I was gonna print it off of my printer at my house with a legal size piece of paper, which is seven by fourteen. Seven fourteen. Fold okay. that over. Gotcha. Boo! She you got yourself a yeah. That's why. And then. I, th I thought about it, and when I was sending it off to get printed, I was like, oh, wait a minute, whoa. If I do it just like, if I do it, okay, so it's this big on my computer. If I do it like that much smaller, it'll fit into a normal comic book bag and board. Otherwise, I'm foobarred. But I didn't think about that until the last minute, so I was just about to hit the order like, oh, well, wait, what if I, you know. So the formatting thing has been a bit of a, a weird Thing. But I think it's going to look cool when it's a collected edition being just kind of a shorter book. It'll be kind yeah. of squarish. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah, I noticed it was a little more square and stuff. Yeah, so I, I, I was curious. I didn't... Sometimes people just... For the reason, like you said, it's just easier like to do like the whatever legal, fold it in two for practical reasons more than anything. So, yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. it's It has definitely pissed off Mark a little bit. He's like, dude, it's, I can't, like, how do we, you know what I mean? Like, what if it's like a weird size? You put it on the table with all the other comics at a convention, and it's like, what's this small ass book? What the fuck's that about? You know? I'm like, I don't know. Just, I'm an asshole. Well, Samarian puts out a lot of smaller books like that, too. So, I mean, there are a yeah. few other publishers that do it. Mm. Yeah, they draw yeah. the eye. The, those little weird shaped indie books, like I, I always buy them. Like I don't know what the hell they are most of the time, and I'm just like, hey man, this thing's weird looking. I want it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's got the weird nugget size. You know, it's like ooh, kind of like zines back in the day. They're always kind of like smaller because it was like fold, like you said, you know, cost efficiency, right? Yeah, just get whatever paper you can get to fold in half to make it as big as possible. You know, yeah. so you can just print out as many as you as you can for the cheapest and you know just get it out there yeah yeah for the original uh when i was making the, all the narita books one through five pre lkc and all that stuff uh i i also have a risograph uh machine which i don't know if you guys are familiar with that it's weird japanese technology from the 90s 80s 90s and it, it's like a color xerox machine but you do one color at a time so it's really kind of like printmaking it's okay. it's like janky registration and it's real um, nuts and bolts. There's hardly any computer stuff going on in there. Mm -hmm. It's right up my alley. So I was printing these covers, you know, a whole bunch of them, and I would chop them up and I would make mini books where you could take an eleven by seventeen, you fold it, and then you fold it again, again. and you get yeah. these little baby ones. And I have yeah. a saddle stapler. Um, so I was sending those out to a couple of diehard fans who were like. Where? How do I get a copy of like a physical copy? Is like, I don't know. They're like, make me one. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. And I started out just peddling those actually at shows or band would play or whatever, and I'd show up with a whole bunch of these weird little mini comics. And it's that that chicken nugget mentality. People see it, they're like, I could put that in my pocket. Sure. It looks like a Xerox copy piece of trash anyway. So if I get drunk and lose it, it's not a big deal, you know. So you sell them for like a dollar to people at shows. Nice. Give you enough so, money to, to like buy a drink, you know. So. so at your merch table, you have like the comics and with oh, the yeah. other merch and stuff. That, that's cool, man. Yeah. 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 So like you get good reception. Like I saw because you posted some pics. You were like you said you were on a on a tour recently, and I think I remember seeing uh, some pics of people showing up and having you sign their comics and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that must that be was... pretty pretty wild when you go somewhere and they're like. They know you for your comics as well. That must that must be fucking cool, well, man. I think what you're thinking of is that we played uh, we played Tucson. We played this place called Club Congress, which is a really cool venue. Um, and there was these 
there's the, the the merch area is kind of a, a hodgepodge of all the merch from all the bands, right? Mm-hmm. So there was a band playing, and their guitarist was real cute, and so was their drummer, right? They were real good looking guys. And these chicks, these young chicks, went up to the merch table, and I had put the sign up there. It was like, comics oh, made by the drummer. And it's right next to all the Born Twins merch, so I figured, you know, two and two, whatever. But no, two and two equaled five. They thought it was the drummer that was on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went over there. I was like, hey, you know, I was like, hey, you, you guys like my comic book? And they're like, I thought it was made by the drummer. And I was like, would you want to buy one if it was made by that guy instead? And they were like, uh, uh, and I'm like, you should buy it anyway. Buy it and then pretend that he drew it, and then when you read it, you'll be really excited. And they were like, "Oh, <laughs> okay," you know. <laughs> so that's how I, that's how I made that sale. And then it became so funny to them that they were like, "Okay, well, you have to sign it. Okay, well, you have to take a picture." To you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah, I did. So, I did go into a couple of like comic shops and and peddle some comics, and most of them were like, "I'm gonna have to bag and board these, man. I can't just put them out on the shelf because we got kids coming in here and shit." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? so, so that's a good strategy. Like when you go and do shows with other bands, scope out which bands have the hottest <laughs> members. Put your yeah. merch table right beside theirs, and always put the comic like right on the edge of the two tables. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Good strategy. <laughs> it's a great strategy. I mean, shit. If I if I if I put it next to like a band that has a female lead singer and she's like super cute or whatever, just say yeah. drawn by the lead singer and you know, then you just get a bunch of like beardos coming over there wanting to buy. You know, <laughs> like, cool too. oh, we want you to sign the book. They'd be like, oh, it's that dude that made it. <laughs> like, hey, what's up, guys? You know. Hopefully they'll be by yeah. later in the night so they'll have a few drinks. They won't care anymore. And they'll be like, yeah, let's sign this like, shit. <laughs> you look different. What, what's going on? Like, yeah, sorry, man. I'm just an ugly dude. Yeah. All right. So uh, just to rehash, uh, we're talking to David Lewan. Uh, he has a Kickstarter running right now called Dusk Witch. Uh, Johnny threw the link in the chats. You can go hit it up. The link's in the chats. Go back it. It's on Kickstarter as we speak. Uh, it's already funded, so you're guaranteed to get this book uh, because it's funded. So you don't have to worry about whether it'll be successful campaign. But, plus, it's finished. We've read it, so it, yeah, we've read it with some minor tweaks. David said, but the 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 meat and potatoes of it's pretty much done. You said you had to, like maybe the inside and back cover to work something yeah, out, and a few small tweaks, yeah. like the logistical stuff of like so. Okay, here's a little weird scenario that I was thinking about. Uh, Morgan, the writer, um, he I sent it to him. Said, "Hey, man, uh, proofread it, make sure I didn't do anything dumb with, uh, you know, the, the, there's no typos or whatever." And he was like, he sent me back a PDF with like circled little bubbles. And he was like, "Oh, you missed, you know, some periods here and there." And I'm like, "Periods? I hate periods, man. Why you gotta put periods in comic books? You know what I mean? It's in a bubble that is a sentence." It's definitely a sentence. It gets read like a sentence. And then I started reading, and I was reading BPRD, and I was like, man, they put periods in their bubbles too. Damn it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? But like intuitively, I don't want to read a period. It makes me feel like I'm reading. I don't want to be reading. I want to be reading a comic. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> but anyway, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's so du- Dusk Witch is on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, actually, the campaign's doing really well. You're at 333 percent funded and there's six days left uh, so just yeah. under a week left to uh so if you want to get in on this you have six days left to go back it so get on that people and mike mignola and yeah. john arcudi making david luan's life all that harder by putting periods in their damn thought bubbles <laughs> bastards bastards <laughs> masters of the craft Ugh. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one other thing about the campaign is uh, if there are add-ons and like special tiers and whatnot that you can get with a screen printed t-shirt by yours truly, um, it's got the Dusk Witch skull on it, which I'm hoping is going to be like our, uh, it's going to be like our, our uh, 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 merchandising like gold mine. You know what I mean? When I made that shirt, I was like, dang, that's cool. I wish I had that shirt. I want a shirt with a weird little skull on it. Yeah, and her eyes and her nose and those three dots make an upside down pentagram. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, saying. you're right. Just saying. Yeah, dude, I designed it. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, and there's also if you back at a certain tier, there's a screen printed poster by me as well. That's gonna be, I 
I think it's two colors, three colors, maybe three colors, yeah. maybe four colors. Hell, I might do six colors. Why not? So if you want some high art from me, you can get it through this Kickstarter. It's also um, like very well funded. Like uh, almost all the stretch goals are unlocked as well. So like you're getting a lot of goodies with this book. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've been bugging me about making a bookmark design because I just kind of haven't gotten around to it. And that, it's mm. kind of snowballed into this thing where he's like, what's it going to be? Is it going to be awesome? It better be really cool. And I'm like, it's just going to be a bookmark, bro. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Yeah. Be a life-changing bookmark, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, is it going to be like embossed or like foil stamped or something? Like what? How? How? How boss is this book going to be? You know. Uh, so the poster that you're doing is that the image uh, you showed with her, with her hand yeah. stretched out shooting? Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful illustration, man. That's going to make Thanks. a fucking killer poster. Yeah, yeah and I've I've uh, designed it to uh, I've I've kind of set it up to where it'll uh, <laughs> bookmark. God damn it! Stop. <laughs> 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 It's ah now I'm like what's it gonna be now I'm freaking out about it ah shit that's what I get that's what I get for building a second yoga studio for my wife god damn it. <laughs> um yeah no the poster is set up uh, when I illustrated it I illustrated it in such a way to where the the colors are you know you're you because when you screen print you do one color you do all of the posters and then you do the next color and you do all the but they're all on separate screens so you have yeah. to divide up the colors the way you want and so to get them to blend with each other and do what you want them to do you have to be really cognizant of where color is and where color is not going to be you know what i'm saying yeah yeah kind of a, yeah well i mean that's uh part you worked in that so you should have it down pretty good yeah <laughs> <laughs> to your i got it down better. okay you got it down okay yeah yeah yeah, I saw that video you posted of uh, you, the the Born Twins t-shirts you were screen printing. Yeah, yeah so I was like, yeah. fuck, this guy fucking prints his own t-shirts too. I was like, what What the hell does he not do? Uh, are you a good cook as well or what? Do you... Look man, at you I, cook, man. I, was, I was just talking to my daughter about making a cookbook, like to, to, to like a, try and get a published cookbook called Dude Food. <laughs> meals you can make without making any dirty dishes it's almost going to be 100 percent different types of tacos but yeah i mean i can make a pretty decent ramen i can i can pick apart a chicken that's already been cooked at the grocery store really well nobody else <laughs> wants to do that they're like carcass yeah. and i'm like yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> fricassee skill Hell yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. nice <laughs> <laughs> but no i'm a terrible cook yeah yeah so uh, you were saying, just to let people know, uh, you're saying Dusk Witch is originally uh, planned to be a three-issue series. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the timetable on that? Uh, do you have one uh, kind of an idea of when you'd like to have the issues come out and have it done by a certain time, or you just let's do the first one, we'll play it by ear from there? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually finished all the illustrations for the first book last February. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I think the fact that this this Kickstarter is, is has been so successful um, will hopefully kind of put a fire under our butts to make more of them happen in a more timely okay. manner. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 real excited to have my plate full with illustration. I'm doing another book with a guy named Bill Poor right now um, called Big Game Saga. It's about a time traveling ninja. Who gets he gets plucked out of time and hunted kind of like for sport, but they don't realize he's a ninja. They just thought he was some farmer schmuck, and then they get their asses handed to him. And it's super fun to draw, um, but it's extremely challenging. It's very uh, you know it's like you know the illustration is there's no there's no shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to I have to go back to feudal Japan. I have to go to the Congo. I have to. There's all these interior shots. There's tons okay. of dialogue that has to sit on the page and has to flow. Um, but yeah, working on that comic book right now. I'm also working on CyberSync. Uh, it's an anthology with a, a kid named Alex Batts, who's okay. uh, working with Brandon Bloxdorf and Apollo City Comics. That's a little six-page book about uh, what, what, how would you elevator pitch these chicks? 
uh, lesbian prize fighters who have a mind meld surgery done to them so that they can feel everything the other one feels when they get punched or kicked. <laughs> Kinky. All right. In the, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, that's kind of what I was like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, yeah. But that's really fun because I, I used to box when I was in high school. So getting to draw people like kickboxing in the ring, is, it's, it's, it's real fun. There's a lot of like action and crazy shit going on, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm excited to have my plate full and just be drawing all kinds of shit. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, how how hard is it for you to schedule and keep things organized and, uh, you know? I, I try not to overbook myself. Um, I was supposed to be running a campaign for the next Narita book right now. Mm -hmm. It was going to launch, I think, on the 26th or something like that. Um, and then Morgan was like, hey, let's launch Dust Witch instead. And I was like, uh, okay, sure. So since I've been concentrating on that, it caught, forced me to like slow down and be like, okay, you're not going to draw the next Narita book or whatever it is you're going to do with it until you've finished all these other books that you're doing. So this Dusk Witch Kickstarter has been a chance for me to relax, which most people who are running a Kickstarter campaign would not tell you that they relax during their Kickstarter. It's usually like a point of stress for them. And they're like, yeah. ah. but for me, it's like, all right, I can chill. I can work on stuff behind the scenes that doesn't have anything to do with promotion right now. Yeah. Um, you know, so. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Mm. Um, like we said before, uh, you're a musician, which we touched on. And uh, what's uh, your other band is called Yardwork? Yeah. Okay. And your your uh, solo stuff is called Peering. Peering, uh, peering Posture. Peering Posture. Uh, yeah. So. What's yard work exactly? Like, how did you you play guitars in that one? Yeah. Okay. Is that uh, yard work is like kind of a straight ahead punk rock band? You know, it's 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 loud, it's fast. All of our songs are like under a minute forty seconds. Okay. If we have a song that's a minute forty five. They're like, dude, you gotta cut that guitar solo out of the song. Like, <laughs> it's going on too long. We're not a jam <clears throat> band. Stop. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. That band is real fun. That's an that's an excuse basically for me to just rock out without having to sing or think too much. Okay. Just get to play guitar and play guitar behind my head and jump off the stage and you know all of that fun stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, I write some I write some of the songs for that band too. I'll, I'll propose songs and they usually take them as is and don't change them at all and just make them awesome, which is pretty cool. Um, my wife's never gonna listen to this so. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have your your uh, solo stuff uh so that's yeah. just what for you to explore things on your own without uh you know yeah just... I, I, some of those songs end up being turning into yard work songs um some of them end up being born twin songs uh but for the most part yeah i, I when i write songs if i write songs in their pure like basic format it's usually whatever it, they sound like with peering posture it's just kind of a sh straight up well i wouldn't say straight up singer songwriter thing because lately i've been i've been sampling this electric organ it's got like a drum machine on it that sounds like real cool okay you know what i mean and yeah. then i just play bass instead of guitar and you know fuzz out the bass or whatever and add some little twinkly keyboard parts in there with like a really delayed vocal I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this is just it's it's, an, it, it's a chance for me to experiment with whatever the hell I want to do without having to answer to anybody else. On the band camp for uh, Born Twins, who um, uploaded the information for the lyrics and stuff? Because there's a, a lot of backstory to a couple of the songs that are on there. That was you. Okay, I, I really enjoyed those insights. So, that, <clears throat> really, I, man, that's the first time anyone's ever said that. That's cool because when I'm writing, I'm like, they don't want to know this at all. Like, why am I? Why am I telling them this? But well, I mean, like, you know, just nice little two lines about like this is an old song. Like uh, we fucked around with it, we forgot about it for about five years, and then like I played it again, and like we we arranged it like this, and now it's better. And I don't know, I, I kind of just bumped to it, and I was reading like all the little back matter things, and I'm like, kind of really got me into the album. Like I said, I, I've been really enjoying it over the <coughs> past week since Joe right gave me the links for your stuff, and yeah, I. I I really appreciate when bands add that type of stuff. I'd actually kind of like to hear the old versions of the songs as well. If you ever get a chance to put those up, that'd be cool. 
Man, yeah, there's a there's a song that we covered from our old band called Red Leaves. So my wife and I have been together since 2001. We got together in high school. She was 17, I was 18, and I was I heard that this cute chick knew how to play bass. She only knew how to play like one Cure song. So we went over to my friend Mike's house to go like jam or whatever and I was like I don't know what the hell's happened, but she's cute. She's got she had a pink warlock Base, you know, do you know what warlock bases look like? A BC Ridge, like, yeah, yeah, BC Ridge. Now they're like metal as fuck. You know what I mean? With the headstock that does this, you know, it's like gnarly. They're pointy, Joe. Really pointy. They're awesome. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the point. It, yeah. it was like it was bright pink, and I was like, I don't know what to expect. Is she gonna shred super hard? And she she didn't shred. She just plays the way she always <laughs> does. But it was it was really cute. Um, but. Yeah, so our old band, uh, Red Leaves, she played bass and I played guitar. Uh, we had various drummers come through. Then the, the roles would change every once in a while. But um, some of those songs, I listened back to them, I'm like, damn, that's a good song. We should try and rehash that song, bring it back to life. It was a good one, you know? So we've been going back to our back catalog that's not digitally online anywhere and yeah. stealing from ourselves when we're having kind of like, oh, we need another song for this album. What do we do? You know, it's great to have that. Cool. Treasure trove. Well, so, yeah, so, question. Are you going to yeah. do a comic book about living in trees anytime soon? Because the song Treehouse <laughs> and you guys and the story about the treehouse, I thought that that was kind of cute about uh, in the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a, I built a treehouse for my daughter who lives in it now. Um, and it's like the most insulated room in the house. Our house is old from the 50s. So there's no insulation in the floor. The walls are drafty, whatever. But her treehouse is like new construction. It's all spray foam. Man, it's cold in there. It's like a refrigerator. Or it's nice and toasty in the wintertime. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, I, I would love to make a comic book that has to do with more like real life stuff that's happened to me. Um, I did actually do a kind of a quasi slice of life thing. For uh, Apollo City Comics, did something called an outcome the comics. It's an oh. a punk anthology. Yeah, yeah. We just, I just got that. I haven't had time to yeah. read it yet. So you have a, you have something in that. Mine is the first. Uh, oh, it's the second story in there. So the first one is like a okay. one pager, and then mine's called the Night at the Parlor. And everything nice. that happens in that comic book, in that little six pages, happened to me as a bartender at this punk rock club that is owned by my mother in law here in Austin. So <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. There's a little. I kind of want to like expand upon that. Actually, that would be really fun because I've got way more crazy ass stories having to do with punk rock and just nice. Yeah, yeah people getting cheese grated in the face and all all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so people can go find all your music on Bandcamp if they want to uh, go listen to to your bands. Um, yeah. Are are all your bands on there? Yard work, uh, uh, the pairing, and Born Twins? I don't think Pairing Posture's on there. No, I haven't really made any formal recordings yet with that yeah. project. But uh, soon, I'm going to, if I ever find some time. <laughs> so, man, so people can go listen to your music there, or uh, I believe most of your stuff's on Spotify as well. Yeah. Um, you have three comics out at the moment. You have Eureka 1 and 2. You have uh, Dusk Witch. Uh, I was wondering, in the tiers, I I forgot to check. Do you have add-ons where you, people could pick up your Rico and stuff like that, or is that you you yeah, that exclusively for for your campaigns, your solo campaigns? No, there's a tier they put in there. It's like the Luhan, you know, deluxe package or whatever. Okay. And you can get all of my comic books that I've made or been part of or whatever. So nice. I I highly recommend if people haven't read your stuff and you think Dusk Witch looks cool, then pick up these other books too, because these other books are are, are very good as well and uh, a really fun read. So, uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I recommend people back that tier when they uh, yeah. when they go when they go hit up the Dusk Witch uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Better hurry up too. There's five days, right? Six six <laughs> days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'll be five, five days five by the time tomorrow. they listen to by it. By the time tomorrow. they yeah. watch this, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, man, uh, like Johnny said, uh, we don't want to take too much of your time because uh, you know you're a busy man, and uh, we 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 see all the stuff you post on Instagram. So uh, we want to make sure uh, you know you 
you stay creative and we don't take up too much of your time so you can make more awesome comics. Uh, did you want to plug your socials so people can find you uh, on social media where they can find your links? I think you have a link tree in your in your bio. So if people want to go check out some more of your other stuff, they could go hit you up uh, on your socials. Where, where can they find you on the, on the socials? So on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, it's just at NaritaComic.com. Or not at not dot com, just at Narita Comic. If you want to check out my link tree, it's NaritaComic.com. Um, and yeah, there's also uh, I think it's Yardwork Band on Instagram, and there's Born Twins Music. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, those those are all of our our thingamajigs. And uh, for your screen printing, you said you have a a printing company as well. Yeah. Uh, do, you, oh, yeah. do, do, do you do printing for other people as well? Or mm -hmm. yeah. So man, if you, if you want to make t-shirts, you can get in touch with David as well. Uh, get in touch with him, ask for a quote, you know, figure out the, yeah. you know, so he can, Box. he can make t-shirts. He can make you comics. Uh, he makes you music, man. He's, uh, <laughs> he, he's just putting all kinds of stuff out there for everyone. Yeah. The, uh, the print shop is called Fox Box Printing. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the little tiny satellite shop that's in my drummer for yard work's backyard. So it's, yeah. I mean, it's it's a straight up mom and pop shop. Nice. I guess I would be mom and he's pop. That's weird. <laughs> okay. you, you can edit that out later. So. <laughs> yeah, cool. So remind everyone, Dusk Witch is going on now. There'll probably be f uh, six, five days left to back. So go back that. Uh, support David. Support Morgan. Uh, the book is great. Uh, congratulations, guys, on uh, a successful campaign. And uh, we'll see where you end up uh, come finish line. I mean, you're already well-funded, so uh, all the best, man, that you guys make it as successful as possible so that, uh, you know, you keep on making comics, which, uh, from the sounds of it, and how prolific you are, I think uh, we're going to see a, a lot more stuff from you in the near future. So thanks again yeah, for hope making all these books for us. I hope so. Thanks for having me on the show, man. I really, I don't get to do this very often, so it's fun. No, no yeah. problem, man. I no, appreciate having you. You are an excellent guest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be back on Friday. We're gonna have uh, Steph uh, Dume. Yeah, Dume. Yeah. Um, he's gonna be on. We're gonna talk to him about his Kickstarter that he's running. Um, and yeah we'll, we'll see you guys then oh and we might have a special episode between then but like uh me and joe have a really cool announcement like there's um pretty cool new um branding for the show that we want to share with everybody so we're going to kind of do a special little short show maybe for that uh play our new theme song um so look out for that when we decide to do it but yeah until then um check you guys later have a great week everyone right.